Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Does history repeat itself? Will liars always be liars and cheaters always be cheaters? Is it worth fighting for someone who may not want us? Today on our space, we jump fearlessly into the unknown to answer these questions. Up first, sometimes we have to join them to beat them. Caught my ex by catfishing. This occurred over six years ago. I was 25 at the time, she was 23. We were together for close to two years. I was infatuated at first. Over time, we learned about each other's pasts. We both had compatible sex drives and found out the two of us had plenty of fun before we met. Now, after meeting, I discovered she cheated multiple times on her ex-boyfriend. I understood at the time and didn't think it would happen to me. Anyways, the longer we were together, the more red flags I found. I tried to keep her happy and even discussed opening our relationship up to include others in the bedroom, though I was cautious because I didn't think she had the maturity to handle it. She rejected my idea immediately, yet I complained I didn't have sex enough. Shortly after this, our relationship deteriorated to the point that I knew I needed to end it, but I had a sinking suspicion she was cheating. Luckily, I found out she was using an app to talk to and meet guys, so I joined and started talking to her. I got her to admit to cheating multiple times, and she agreed to meet up with me. Mind you, she had no idea I was her boyfriend. Anyways, we met up, and the face she gave me was priceless. I do believe, once a cheater, always a cheater. Let's see what the community thinks. Re Rain says, Didn't think it would happen to me. Ah, yes, many of us have felt this way. Almost always wrong. I'm glad you learned without too much pain. Pereira 1955 says, Never have any doubts about it. Cheating is never an accident or mistake. It's always a lack of character and morals. No fear nor there says, Too bad she couldn't deny it. Sad part is how many guys was she with before she came home to you. You may want to consider STD testing. Wow, player two has entered the game. This is actually a brilliant way to confront your partner about cheating, OP. It's really unfortunate to think that the person we are totally head over heels for is capable of betraying us like that. I don't think that's a lack of judgment on our part. How are we supposed to get anywhere in life without opening ourselves up to people? I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to take a stand and place a mirror in front of people so they can see who they truly are. Which is exactly what you did, OP. You showed your girlfriend that she's a cheater. And most likely, always will be. Way to go. What lengths have you gone to confront your partner about their infidelity? Meanwhile, up next, it's not too much to ask for a bare minimum of what we deserve. Why is it up to me, person who was cheated on, to make all the decisions? I've been silently reading posts here and on other subs, and there's something that I keep seeing that I just don't understand. People tell cheaters, yes, work on yourself, etc., but let your partner decide whether or not they want to reconcile and follow that decision. And I get it. In a lot of cases, the betrayed spouse wants to separate it and it is best that the wayward spouse follows that due to how toxic some situations are. I'm a betrayed spouse. I love him, married him, had kids with him, was faithful to him. So obviously I wanted this to work. He's the one who decided that I wasn't enough and that some other woman was more worth his time than me. So why is it up to me to show him my cards when really I don't know I know his? Why is it up to me to be vulnerable again and say, I choose you, please choose me too when there's already been instances of him not choosing me. And yes, separation could sound like the easier option because why be with someone you don't trust? But I thought that was the whole point of the reconciliation, trying to build that trust back. The wayward spouse working on himself to show me that he can be given another chance. I probably sound immature, but I want him to fight for me and it is so frustrating to see him just take it. I told him to leave the house and he just left. I told him to stop showing me he cares and he just stopped. I told him I want a divorce and he just said, okay. Not even a fight. Nothing. I could tell he was sad and I've heard that he keeps telling people how much he loves me and wants to be with me, but he didn't even try to fight it. Yet he didn't mind fighting to hide his affair from me or fighting with his morals while he was cheating or even fighting to fit it in his schedule. So I just don't matter? Or now that it's about fighting for me and the kids, he doesn't know what fighting means? Now he knows how to respect me after treating me like an idiot and lying? Now he cares about my feelings? Every day that I see him, I just hope he will finally tell me that he's not ready to give up and beg me to give him a chance. But that time never comes. And I come on here and see people telling wayward spouse to do exactly what he is doing. And I just want to know why. Why do I have to be the one to make all the decisions when I'm hurt and confused? The community has some thoughts. Consequence Itchy7744 starts us off. Why would he fight for you? He already destroyed your relationship once. 
I know you want to hear these things, but it is better that you are not, because 99% of the time, those things are lies, manipulations, and gaslighting. Hoover us back in, so we get put through the ringer one more time. Maybe your significant other respects you enough to not BS you about it. It's not what you want to hear, but it's usually the truth. The relationship is done. The OP replies, and that is true. I don't know if I can trust him, but it would be nice to know that he cares, or at least once cared, about me to at least try. Because right now, it feels like all these years later, I was just nothing. He has said things and acted in ways that seemed genuine, but he has lied during the affair, so who knows if I can trust what he says now. He looks depressed and hurt by the whole situation, but again, he was good at acting and faking things with me during the whole affair, so who knows if I can trust that. I guess I just want to know that I mattered at least enough for him to do more than agree to everything I say. Consequence Itchy 774 replies back again. Obviously, I am not your significant other, and I am a betrayed spouse as well. But I will say that him being depressed and just doing whatever you ask, I see how that looks like not fighting for your relationship. And honestly, maybe he isn't because he knows he went too far. He knows there's no coming back. I don't know. But it also shows that on some level, he understands. He's not lying or manipulating or gaslighting, right? He's not doing the cheater's playbook of blaming you, etc. So to me, that says he gets the magnitude of what wrong he has done. My significant other will probably never fully realize that. It doesn't mean you will reconcile or that you can trust him. But on some level, it seems to me like he gets it. He understands what he has done. Maybe he is too depressed and or hopeless to adequately emote these feelings to you. Or maybe he is shell-shocked and numb and can't feel emotions. Have you guys done marriage counseling? This is one where the betrayed spouse should be setting it up, not you. If he schedules marriage counseling without you asking, I would see that as a very positive step. Again, not saying you'll make it, but it's a gesture that he shows he effed up. This might be the closest thing to fighting for you that you'll get. Ugh, all of this, and then I look at the title of your post and just, yeah, what the F? Why are we talking about this and deciding? And not the people who effed it all up. Man, what a world. I think there's a lot of power in being vulnerable and having a choice, OP. But I totally get that it's not at all easy. These choices can often lead down a path of a lot more hurt, a lot of truths, and it's hard to face all of that. You don't sound at all immature, and you certainly aren't asking for a whole heck of a lot. We want people to choose us, and we deserve that. And shame on him for not doing that. Personally, I think that means he's weak. It's super hard to think and even face the fact that some people are too weak and broken to choose people who love them unconditionally. I think that may be because we can see through these people. We see through their hurt and pain and whatever they're insecure about, and we push them to be the best they can be despite it all, all with unconditional love. I think the issue is that your husband may not feel good enough for whatever reason, or he's afraid to be the best version of himself that you can believe he can be. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments. Moving on, let's give our next OP a hand for feeling the fear and doing it anyways. Today, I left, and I am scared. Today I left, and I feel relieved but also afraid of how much my life is going to change when I wake up in the morning. I'm sure the pain will hit me later. A month ago, I found Tinder on his phone. After that incident, I gave his journal a peek and learned more about what happened. But it was true that he never met up with anyone. He seemed extremely remorseful and willing to work things out. Tonight, I read his journal again after he came back from a two week long trip. He wrote in detail about how he had hooked up with someone else. There is absolutely no coming back from this. I left a note on the page saying we were over, but he woke up and saw it. Not many words were exchanged. He was more upset about me reading his journal than he was about anything else. I packed an overnight bag and now I'm at my parents. Tomorrow, I will have to face him again to decide how we're going to move out and who gets what. I just needed to get all this off my chest. I feel like such a fool. He confessed to me that he had also cheated at some point in the first year of our three and a half year relationship. I am very unsure of what the future holds for me now and how my living circumstances will change. Small update. Found out today that he has cheated on me a total of three times in our relationship, twice in the last two weeks and once at the very beginning of the relationship. The hookup he journaled about was the day before I took off to work to go visit him while he was on his trip. I have officially booked an appointment for an STD screening and whatnot. I was also able to make sure I got the couch we bought together because I really loved it. This is tough, but your comments mean a lot to me. Thank you for your support. Our first reaction comes from Automatic Biscotti 31 You violated my privacy. Yeah, well, you violated my trust. SMD. Redundant Pundit says, The future holds not having to live with a cheater and not being exposed to possible STIs and not being lied to on a daily basis. To me, that seems a great improvement in living circumstances. Good luck. You are absolutely not a fool, OP. 
I can't believe he was more angry at the fact that you read his journal. Maybe his anger in you reading your journal was actually his shame of getting caught projecting out onto you. You weren't in the wrong for reading it after you had your suspicions, by the way. I'm so proud of you for leaving and taking this huge leap. The future is full of potential, and this should be treated as such a blossoming time for you. You're going to be just fine. Please don't be afraid. The future is ready and waiting for you. Just keep waking up every morning, OP. Let the sun shine on your face and welcome a new beginning. Let us know how you get over fear of moving on from a divorce or breakup. And lastly, you can usually tell when a man is good if he has a dog who loves him. X left, I gave her everything for the dog. Four years later, I don't regret anything. Four years ago, my ex, who I am married to for one and a half years, left me for her boyfriend. I was blindsided as she played the perfect housewife extremely well. She lied to everyone and smeared my name. She then helped her boyfriend to take my job position. Her dad owned the business I work for. I lost the citizenship approval after she had her dad talk with his friend who works for the immigration. Seeing how I don't care about everything anymore, I told her that I would give her everything, my house, my car, what's left of my assets, if she let me keep the dog. She agreed. I took the dog back to my home country, handled all the vaccination and approvals, and three months later, he's back with me in my parents' house. The first year after returning is the worst time of my life, but the little guy helped me rise from my bed every day. I went back to university, will graduate this fall, and the little guy helped me find my current girlfriend. She's a veterinarian. We moved in after six months of dating. We just talked about marriage recently and how she loves my idea to have my dog be the best man of the wedding day. My life has never been better. Some reactions from the community, starting off with Belf17. Good for you, mate. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. The OP replies, Never been happier. Last month, I finally reached my targeted BMI. 7 Samurai 1954AK says, I am so, so happy for you. What a thoughtful way of departing from your old world, taking man's best friend, your dog, to start over again. How courageous of you. He really did help you, didn't he? He better be the most important little guy at your wedding. This was so sweet to read. I love dogs. They are something else. I'm wishing you the best for your future. The OP replies, thank you. He is really the best. Quote from the movie Marley and Me. A dog doesn't care if you're rich or poor, educated or illiterate, clever or dull. Give him your heart and he will give you his. The day I got him from the shelter, we've been inseparable. Wow, OP, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Shame on her for treating you like that. She quite literally tore your life apart. But I'm so glad you were able to take your dog, your best bud. Thank goodness for that, little buddy. As horrible as the situation was, I think it was a blessing in disguise. All this brought you to your new partner. There was a love-shaped hole in your heart, and this person was able to fill it. I don't think it's a coincidence that your best little buddy brought you two together either. So happy for you both. Who's the best buddy that got you through the tough times? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. Bye for now.